title this morning is called The Power of Your Thoughts. Did you know your thoughts can lead you in several directions if you dwell on them? All right, I think you'll uh, learn some good things this morning. I really do. This is a good message. Now, I think we all know that we should think on good things that are positive and uplifting. Would you agree? Good. I'm glad you're agreeing. Now, sometimes that is easier said than done, isn't it? Okay. The question is, how can I habitually think good thoughts? What happens if you're still overcome by discouraging and depressing thoughts? Now, if we're going to have success in our thought life, we must first get rid of the weeds. We just call them weeds, if that's okay. Now, as any gardener knows, you must get rid of the weeds before you can grow a quality crop, right? Now, many people, even after they become Christians, they've got these self-defeating thought patterns that continue to grow. For instance, what you think, you eventually believe. And that's pretty true, isn't it? What you think, you will eventually believe. Now, what you believe, you will feel, and what you feel, you will speak and eventually do it. All right? Your feelings are a direct result of what you're thinking. If you feel discouraged or depressed, then you must have been thinking and meditating on, and dis- on, on discouraging and depressing thoughts. Discouragement and depression doesn't come any other way. Okay? What you dwell on will defeat you or make you victorious. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16 says this, For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Therefore, we have the ability to have the same attitudes that Jesus had or has. And that gives us then the opportunity to understand what Jesus is thinking because he has shared his thoughts with us in the word of God. All right? Now, some people say, well, the Bible says that God's ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Yes, the Bible does say that, but the Bible doesn't stop there. Now, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 and 12, it says this, even so... No one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received, not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Well, that's good news, isn't it? In other words, you don't have to stay below God's thoughts. Your thoughts can come up to his level. Well, the question is how? Simple. By meditating on God's word. All right? Now, God's thoughts, again, are his words. And so if you meditate on his word, you will know exactly what God thinks. And then you will be thinking his thoughts. And Jesus, well, let's put it this way. Just because you've made Jesus Lord doesn't mean you'll automatically think God's thoughts. You know that and I know that. All right? We had to learn, didn't we? We had to get programmed by the word of God. Now, you only begin thinking God's thoughts when you begin to fill your mind and heart with the Word of God. That's the only way. Now, Romans 12, 2 calls that process the renewing of your mind. Now, every Christian should have their minds renewed from the world system. That doesn't mean to say you dismiss everything in the world system, but there's a better system that will lift us to higher things, all right? And that's God's system. It also says that that process will transform you. Now, why does it have such a dramatic effect? Because when you change your mind, you change your choices. That changes everything. God does something with your spirit the moment you're born again. Now the question, what does he do? He recreates it. All things pass away. All things become new. All right? But the responsibility of doing something with your body and mind lies with each one of us. Okay? We have to do it. Now, God will help you do something with your body and your mind, but he won't do it against your will. He's given us a free will. 
He will only do it if we cooperate with him. And he will then cooperate with you. All right? You are the one who has to do something with your body and your mind. God wants healthy bodies. He wants transformed minds. But you see, your mind is trained to think negatively. 99% of people are like that, right? From the time you were a child, your mind was trained that way. That's why Romans 12 verse 1 says, I beseech you, I implore you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, what? A living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You know what that means to me? That's the least you can do. All right? So you present your body as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God. And then you renew your mind. You get your mind renewed with the word of God. Now, it takes time, and it's true, it takes effort on your part to retrain it by renewing it with the word of God. Then you have the opportunity to begin to think the way God thinks, which leads you to some exciting prospects. 1 Corinthians 2.9 says this, No man has ever seen, heard, or even imagined the wonderful things God has in store for those who love the Lord. Then verses 11 uh, to uh, 13, For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him. See, no one can know a person's thoughts except the person's spirit. All right? Even though no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. So as believers, God's Spirit lives on the inside of us and is able then to reveal to us the heart and thoughts of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Now that is saying that we have received God's Spirit not the world's spirit, so we can know the wonderful things that God has freely given us. Can you remember when you first got born again? Okay? You see, you didn't automatically understand the things of God. Then, then at times you probably got surprised. Oh, wow, that's great. That's what that means. You see, you can be a scientist. You can be a very, very intelligent person in the natural realm. But it doesn't mean to say you'll understand the things of God. You've got to be recreated, reborn in your spirit. When you read the word of God, that then transforms and renews your mind to think the way God thinks in situations. What is wonderful is that we can actually know God's thoughts because we are what? One with him. Can you see that? No matter where you are in life right now, I want to encourage you. God has much more in store for you. He wants you to have more wisdom in your life so you can make some better decisions. He wants to bless you financially so you can be a blessing to others. I can tell you with great confidence, your best days are right out in front of you. For every one of us. If you will begin today to think the way God thinks though. Now the Bible says in Proverbs 4 verse 18, The path of the righteous grows brighter and brighter and brighter. So we need to start thinking increase. I'm not just talking about dollar notes. I'm talking about everything in your life, spirit, soul, and body. Think that way. Start expecting the unexpected and look at life through eyes of faith. Now Isaiah 43 verse 19 says, and this is God speaking to his people. So he's speaking to you today. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. You do not perceive and know it, and will you not give heed to it? See? Do you have a vision for victory for your life? Seriously. Are you living each day filled with faith and expectancy? Now the verse doesn't say that God is going to do a new thing someday. He said, now it springs forth, okay? He's saying if you can perceive that, if you can know and believe that, if you can give heed to it, then it will spring forth. He didn't say maybe next week, next month or next year. God said, I can do something new in your life right now. 
I like that kind of God. Right now. Can you not perceive it? Now, if you let go of your old way of thinking and take hold of the new thing that God is for you, then you'll be able to receive it. Now, God said in Jeremiah 29, verse 11, My plans for you are good, not evil, to give you a future and a hope. His plans for you are good, regardless of what has happened in your past. When you let go of the past, the first thing you need to do is to make a plan. Proverbs 16.3 says, Commit to the Lord, whatever you do, and then your plans will succeed. Let me read that again. Commit what you do to the Lord, and your plans will succeed. That's good to know, isn't it? Now, in order to fulfill your destiny, you have to make a plan then according to God's purposes and stay focused to fulfill the plan. Wake up each day knowing where you're headed, which direction you're taking, what you're going to accomplish, and then you stay with it, stick with it. Don't allow the distractions and busyness of life to get you off course. Proverbs 4.25 says, Let your eyes look straight ahead, don't look to the left, and do not look to the right. Well, that simply means just go straight for your plan, your purpose, wherever you're at in your life. Don't be distracted. Don't spend your energy and time on things that are not helping you fulfill your destiny. Remember, God's plans are blessed. Right? If you will walk in his plans for your life, you will experience his abundance in every way. Everything that you set your hand to. That's what the scriptures are telling us. Does God lie? No. We just got to learn to fit in and believe those plans for our life. See? That means we need to speak what we're seeking. Amen? If you're going to live a life of victory, you must speak positive words of faith and declare what God says about your situation. I guarantee some of you right now are not quite happy with your situation or circumstances. Well, don't let them just devour you. Why don't you find the word of God and start speaking God's blessing? blessings? You'll find in God's word, he says, I will bless you. You're important to me. Now I put it in our language. I want you to be successful. I want you successful in your job. Everything you put your mind to. Amen? See? If you're going to live the life of victory, if you want to live a life of victory then, you must speak positive words. This is not just positive thinking. This is God's word. Where do you think they got all this stuff about positive thinking from? It's from the word of God. Now, you can go somewhere, you can pay hundreds of dollars to hear somebody say, what I'm saying to you right now, but they won't put God in it. They put you in it. That's why it fails. You've got to put God in your life. You've got to know it's God working in you through his word. Amen? Philippians 4.13 says, it declares that you can do all things. Did you hear me? All things through Christ who strengthens you. As you attempt to do that, it'll give you the ability, the strength to see it through. No matter how inadequate or unqualified you may feel, Jesus promised to strengthen and enable you. When the time of adversity comes, what do you say about your situations? You, you face them, don't you? Do you declare that you're an overcomer through Christ? See, anyone can be positive when things are going well. True? True? But the way you respond when adversity comes will either make you or break you. What you say in the midst of your difficulties will have a direct impact on the outcome. Now consider, but don't dwell on the facts of your situation. Look at the truth of God's word. Try to line up God's word to the problems. Declare his truth over your situation until the facts line up with the word of God. Commit the words of your mouth to be determined to speak God's thoughts of victory over your life and the lives of those around you. Stand strong during adversity. Ephesians 6.13 says, Put on the full armor of God so that when the 
day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. Now, we all face challenges and difficult times. God is not the one behind the storms. How many of you know it is the devil? If you're not sure, you pray and ask God, it is the devil, I'm telling you. But it's in times of difficulty that if we press into the word, then we grow and become stronger. It's an opportunity to allow God's word to come alive into your life. Amen? And see you through to victory. It's an opportunity to allow God's word all the time. You know, you should be thinking all the time, I'm going to allow God's word to bring me that victory. Victory in the home. Victory in my relationship, business, work, whatever you do. See, you can't run from everything that's hard in your life and expect God to deliver you immediately. Fight the good fight of faith. That's what the Bible teaches. Now, if you're faithful to God, he will be faithful to you. Maintain your joy. Because Nehemiah 8.10 says, For the joy of the Lord is your strength. You know, we all face problems. But you know, if you get that joy inside your spirit, it kind of lifts you. You know what I mean? You should. It'll strengthen you. That's what it's all about. In Psalm 34, verse 1, David said, I will bless the Lord at all times, good and bad. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Amen? At all times means in good times, as well as the tough times. The Bible tells us very clearly here to stay full of the joy, no matter what we're facing. The joy of the Lord is your source of strength. Now, the enemy knows that. He knows that if he can get you discouraged before long, you'll become weak, and he'll be able to easily defeat you. All right? When you're full of joy and have a good attitude, it's keeping yourself strong. Now, the positive attitude of faith paves the way for God to turn your situations around. You keep yourself full of his joy by meditating on the goodness, goodness and promises of God. All right? Did you know you're approved? Did you know God approves you? Mm, that's good. Jeremiah 1.5 says this, Before you were ever formed in your mother's womb, I saw you and approved you. Amen? That's good to know. You were created in his image. And you are the apple of his eye also. Now notice the verse we just read in Jeremiah. doesn't say that God approves you as long as you don't have any faults or as long as you don't make any mistakes. No, God approves you unconditionally. That's good to know, isn't it? No matter how many weaknesses you may think you have, no matter how many times you fall, you've got to get right back up again and again and keep holding your head up high. One of the keys is to do it immediately, not to dwell on the problem for a while and feel miserable. Just start fighting it straight away. You get out of the situation quicker that way, with the word of God, all right? Now, here's another thing. Do not allow the enemy to bring strife into your life by deceiving you into thinking that you are not good enough. Tell the person next to you you're good enough. I'll put a PS on that if you're born again. Okay, all right. Philippians 3, verse 13 to 14 says this. I do not consider, brethren, that I have captured and made it my own yet, but one thing I do... It's my one aspiration, forgetting what lies ahead, behind rather, and straying forward to what lies ahead. Amen? That's the important thing. I press what? Towards the goal. To win the supreme and heavenly prize to which God in Christ Jesus is calling us upward. Amen? Now, it's time then to be determined when it comes to letting go of the past Pressing forward to the abundant life that God has in store for you. Amen? It's time to rise up and bodily go after the happiness, health, and peace that God has promised in his word. God told uh, Joshua to cross the Jordan and go into the, and possess the land, didn't he? Do you know what possess really means? 
It implies action. Action. It means to drive out the previous tenants too. Now don't go doing that to your neighbours. Jesus said in Matthew 11 verse 12, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, but the violent take it by force. It's time to stop dwelling on past mistakes and failures and set your focus on the word of God and all of his promises. You know what? You'll discover his abundance of joy too then. His peace, his prosperity in every area of your life. Your past failures are washed clean by the precious blood of Jesus. Philippians 3.10 tell us, For my determined purpose is that I may know him, that I may progressively become more deeply, intimately acquainted with him, perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person more strongly and more clearly, that I may in the same way come to know the power of overflowing from his resurrection. God has many great things in store for all of his children, but you will never get there without opposition. So we need to know these facts, okay? That's why you must stay focused and committed to whatever God is calling you to, all right? You must continually stay in fellowship with your heavenly Father through prayer, worship, study of his word, and then fellowship with other believers. But the exciting thing about being a Christian is also to know that no matter what comes across your path, God has got a plan and a purpose for you. That's important. He has a full life of abundance prepared for you. Now the same mighty power that raised Christ from the grave is available to you right now, today, because of his Holy Spirit. It's the same power that helps us to accomplish all things through Christ. It's the same power that helps us to break addictions, overcome strongholds, walk in love, go the extra mile when we feel like we can't take another step. Now look at what the Apostle Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, verse 10 that we just looked at. His desire was to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. Now, we could read that and just read over that, but let's uh, listen to this again. To know Christ. Well, you know Christ if you're born again. Okay? And experience now the mighty power that raised him from the dead. That was the greatest power ever destroyed on this planet Earth. And he says, he wants you to know that power. It's mighty. It's available to you. They don't really tell you that in the average church, do they? Oh, well, you know, you need to stop, you know, drinking, swearing, abusing people, doing this, doing that. They tell you all the wrong things. But you've done those things. God's forgiven those things. You're getting God and you'll stop doing those things. Amen? That's what happens. You've got to change your life according to the word of God. When you do that, you're going to know his mighty power. He wants that power working in you. If the power of God is working in you, guess what? You're going to see signs and wonders. You're going to be like that early church that went out and people flocked from everywhere to see the miracles and everything that was happening. The church that's a real church should be full of life, power of the Holy Spirit. I don't care what they say. Full of faith too. Faith. Have you noticed churches now knock faith? You know why they knock faith? Because they've never learned it for themselves. They've never learned the word of God. And that's the truth. Amen? When you know the word and you know what the word is talking about, faith rises in you. Because things come against all of us in different ways, but that's when you can get strong and you stand and you declare the word in your situations. That's how it works. I don't have to run to some pastor. and What can I do today? Grow up, child. Become an adult in God. That's what we should be, all of you. Amen? See? Hallelujah. Now, is that your desire today? Really? If you've never prayed that before, I encourage you to make that a daily request before God, that you'll know the power, the mighty power that raised him from the dead. 
Now the next thing after that is Ephesians 4, 29, which tells us, Let no foul or polluting language, nor evil word, nor unwholesome or worthless talk ever come out of your mouth. That's not easy to do, you know. Why? Because we grew up, depending on all different circumstances, all of us, but we said things the way we heard things. Correct? Then we made friends with people, and then we start to say things they said. It's true, isn't it? That's how it works. Hallelujah. So he goes on. But only such speech as is good and beneficial to your spiritual progress of others, as fitting to the need and the occasion that it may be a blessing and give grace, God's favor, to those who hear it. Now back to that first verse again, or first part of the verse. Let no foul or polluting language, nor evil word, nor noisome or worthless talk ever, ever come out of your mouth. Now, that's quite a standard to live up to, right? Amen? Do you get upset when the wife burns the toast? Or is it vice versa? I don't know. Okay. See, complaining is not based on your circumstances. It's based on the attitude of your heart. When you have a heart full of gratitude, it leaves no room for complaining. By the way, I speak to myself while I'm telling you these things. Amen. See, we never stop learning, okay? There is always something to thank God for, no matter what kind of adversity you're facing in your life. Thank him for the promises in his word. That no matter where you are in life, he's leading, guiding, and prospering you, spirit, soul, and body. Don't allow the poison of complaining prevent you from receiving all that God has for you. Psalm 19 verse 14 says this, May the words of your mouth, the meditation of your heart, be pleasing in God's sight. All right, next, you must learn to overcome opposition then. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 9 says, For a wide door of opportunity for effectual service has opened to me. There is a great and promising one, and there are many adversaries. So it is God's desire that you grow and reach your full potential. Anytime you take a step forward, the enemy will try to bring opposition against you. God promises that through him, you can overcome any opposition the enemy brings your way. When you step out in faith and opposition comes, stand your ground. Keep doing what you know to do. Keep on praying, reading the Bible, going to church, trying to walk in love. Keep your heart right and speak words of hope and victory over your life. When the enemy sees you are more determined than he is, he's going to have to back down. Because the greater one lives in you. Amen? Stay focused on the word and the promises of God, no matter what comes against you. All right? Now, when someone treats us badly, it isn't always easy to respond with a blessing. But Jesus tells us to do it anyway. Luke 6, 28 says, Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who hurt you. We're not supposed to bless an enemy because they deserve it, but because we are told to do it. We never feel like blessing some of these herders, do we? But why does God tell us to do that? Because he's trying to work on them too. He loves everybody. He loves his creation. Amen? Now, sometimes people need God to bless them when they deserve it the least. Have you experienced that? Blessing someone who has mistreated us is more effective than revenge. When we decide to bless someone, do you know what? We're keeping ourselves free from bitterness and then firmly placing them in God's hands. All right, number 6, verse 24 says this. Say to them, may the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. See, when we speak, we are releasing good things from God into someone's life. 
Now, you do it for yourself as well. We all need that too. Declare you are blessed with God's supernatural wisdom and receive some clear direction for your life. Declare that you are blessed with creativity, courage, talent, abundance. You are blessed with a strong will, self-control, and self-discipline. Do you all feel like that? It's three or four. Praise God, at least we've got some. Amen. <laughs> Listen, you are blessed with a great family. Good friends, good health, faith, favor, fulfillment, peace, kindness, goodness. So you're blessed with everything. You're blessed with success, supernatural strength, promotion, divine protection. You are blessed with compassionate hearts. Amen. You've got a positive outlook on life, haven't you? Amen. Next year, the sun's going to be great. You don't know which sons I'm talking about, do you? Sons of God first, then. Sons that live on the Gold Coast. Amen. Declare that everything you put your hand to is going to prosper and succeed. Amen. Next, develop a restoration mentality. Now, God promised his people, if we read Joel chapter 2, verse 25, 26... I will restore the years that the locust has eaten. I'll bring you out with plenty and you shall be satisfied. See, I, I keep reading God's word. You, you know, I could follow this on for another three or four chapters. And you keep finding the blessings of God everywhere. It's not all, you're condemned, you're rotten sinner, you're this, you're that. It's all good stuff. This is what God wants for your life. We have all, we've all had opportunities we've missed, haven't we? Have you missed a few? Chances that we've blown? We think, well, why didn't I put more effort into that relationship? Why did I spend doing those things all those years? I was really doing the wrong thing. But God is a God of restoration. He always gives us another chance. How many chances have you gone through? How am I, how am I about this? Three millionth one, I think. Yeah. You probably are too. <laughs> and sometimes things happen that are not our fault. Some people who didn't have a good childhood, they were treated very well. But God said here in Joel chapter 2, verse 25, I will restore the years that have been stolen. Amen? That means God can make up for the years of your life you feel you have lost. You may not be able to relieve your childhood, but it can make the rest of your life rewarding and fulfilling. You may feel the years wasted in a relationship that didn't work out. But don't get discouraged. Instead, believe every opportunity you've overlooked, every chance you've ever missed, God can restore it back to you. He can bring those opportunities across your path again. You can break free, free from the hurts, the pain, the mistakes of the past and then recover the blessings that have been stolen from you. Not only does God want to restore things to you, he wants to give you twice as much as you had before. No matter where you are today, whatever's happened in your past, God wants to give you the opportunity to have a new future, a better future. You may be doing quite well now, but do you know it can be much better? It can be greater. Choose to release the past by forgiving those who may have hurt you. I've heard people, Christians I'm talking about, oh, I could never forgive them for what they did to me. It would be pretty bad if God thought that way, wouldn't it? We'd all be in trouble. See, we've got to open our hearts. We've got to invite the God of restoration to begin a new work into your life. Allow him to give you a new start, a fresh future, that is better than anything you could imagine. Now you should be starting to think and believe that surely God wants you to live a satisfied life. He has promised to restore all things the enemy has stolen. However, just because God gives you this great promise doesn't mean it will automatically come to pass in your life. All of us have to do our part to develop a restoration mentality. 
Expect things to change in your favour. Be strong-willed and determined. Do everything you can to recover what the enemy has stolen. If you will do your part to have a restoration mentality and continue in the word of God, you can use every obstacle in your life as a stepping stone that will take you to a better place of greater blessings. We've got to focus on the future. Now listen to me. If we were focused on the world's future right now, oh, that could be a bit wonky, couldn't it? It doesn't look good. But I want to tell you something. God's standards are not the world's standards, so don't worry about what the world is going to do. Just think, what can I do in this world? Because God's going to bless me, and I'm going to be the head and not the tail. I'll be above and not beneath, and blessed in everything I put my hand to. I'm going to have a greater time I've ever had. And I'm telling you something now. You'll find out soon, if you believe in God's returning for you, that before he returns, you can have some of the greatest successes you'll ever have in your life. Because there's a time of blessing, only a short time, I believe, coming for God's people to do something good in this world now. It's not time to riot, you know, go to the mountains, we don't have too many anyhow, and get yourself in a cave, hide away, forget that stuff, get out front. God will bless you. God is with you. He will bless everything you put your hand to if you start to trust him and believe him. And you see, we can't take anything with us, can we? So let's do something good now. Amen? Stay positive. But to, you see, to be that way, you've got to start building yourself up now. Otherwise, you will be running to the hills. You don't need to. Hallelujah. Praise God. Focus on the future. Do not cast away your confidence, for it will be richly rewarded. Hebrews 10.35 See, I believe God is trying with everything he's got for the church, not just as the real church, everywhere where there's a real church of Jesus Christ. Amen. To enlarge our vision. You see, most of us just have a vision for ourselves. No, God's vision is for everyone. Okay? But in order for this to happen, the seed has to take root in your heart, spirit. Before you're ever going to be successful, before your dreams ever come to pass, you have to look through the eye of faith and see them coming to pass. You see, if I believe I've got something of God, I meditate on it. I know no one else will ever know or fully understand what you've got in your spirit. You can share things, and to a degree people will understand but you see, that's what you've got to keep to yourself. And daily, I speak what I believe God's told me to do for many years. Have I seen everything come to pass yet? No. But I'm going to. See, you've got to stay with it. If it's not God, you let it go anyhow. If it's God, you keep it going. And you keep it going. That's what you're supposed to do. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. The enemy doesn't want you to fulfill your destiny. You do understand that, don't you? Have you noticed the more you try to move with God? Let's be honest. The devil moves against you. He wants to stop you in your tracks. You could become very dangerous. Amen? So what does he do? to stop your destiny. He immediately tries to discourage you and uproot the seed that God has planted in you. Okay? Keep expecting things to change to your favor. Amen. Every obstacle in your life is a stepping stone. See it that way. That will take you to a place of greater blessings. Keep focusing on your future. I can't say that too many times. In order to defeat the enemy in your life, you must stay focused on God's promises. Constantly meditate on his promises. Live a life that is pleasing, honoring to God if you can. You won't be perfect, but do your best. Thank the Lord for his faithfulness, no matter what the circumstances look like. Before long, you'll begin to see the dreams that God has placed in your spirit come to pass. Dreams filled with the blessings and victory. 
You were created to live in victory. You've got to learn to persevere until you see the promise. Hebrews 10 verse 36 says, Patience, endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. Then you will receive all that he has promised. What are you really believing God for? Promotion? Healing? Better relationships? Deliverance from some addiction or bad habits? See, God has promised all these things to you in his word. It's his desire for you to live in wholeness all the days of your life. When you do the will of God by obeying his word, guess what? It opens a door for his promises to be fulfilled in your life. Now you may be doing all the right things today. Don't give up. Perseverance will carry you to the promise. Persevering means that you are focused and you are believing in what God says about your situation. It's looking away from the distractions and negative Defeating thoughts we get. Persevering looks away from discouragement and looks to the word of God. Perseverance has a voice and it says things like this. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. If God is for me, who can be against me? I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. You know, if you say that long enough, you start feeling that way. Now, whatever you're believing God for, I trust some of you are believing for some things right now. Stand strong and fight the good fight of faith so that you can see his promises fulfilled in your life. Remember Jesus said, if you believe, if you believe when you pray that you receive it, you shall have it. You see, I know you know that's what it says, but do you really do it? Do you really believe? If God gives you a word, can't you believe it? Now, sometimes that word could be way past what you believe is possible in the natural way of thinking, but we're not dealing with the natural way. We're dealing with the spiritual way, God's way. And God never fails. If God says something can happen, it's the truth, no matter what circumstances or anybody says. Amen? You just line up with God, then it comes to pass. You know, with divine healing, you meet people every day, cancer victims, different things, and you know, it's, it's kind of put into them. You know, this is it. Do the best you can. Enjoy your life right now. How do you enjoy your life when you're full of pills? Amen. It's a death sentence. That's not God. God is a life sentence. There is nothing in this life that can stop you from overcoming anything the enemy has tried to bring against you. You've got to stay in belief. I believe. Thank you, Jesus. By your stripes and meal. Thank you, Jesus. You promised to prosper me. Thank you, Jesus. You'll open the door for me to good things in my life. See, speak positive things. Now, often when you're in that situation, it doesn't seem like that. It's the opposite. Speak it and speak it and keep saying it and you'll get better and better. Amen? Hallelujah. Feed your faith. It can overcome the world. Stand strong. You will see his promises fulfilled in your life. 1 John 5, verse 4 to 5 says, For every child of God defeats this evil world, and we achieve this victory through our faith. So it's your faith. And who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. You see, none of this makes sense to the average person. Good people in the world, what we call good people, you know what I mean? That's got nothing to do with it. Only the ones that believe Jesus is the Son of God. That means he's living in your heart. You can believe for the impossible then, all right? As a child of God, you have the power within you to overcome this world. The words defeat, victory, and win in the verse you just read. It defeats all those things that are negative. All you have to do with overcoming what you could never achieve on your own is all in that scripture, 1 John 5, 4 to 5. That includes everything in the world, everything the world is trying to bring your way. The Bible tells us, 
Faith comes by hearing the word of God. Romans 10, 17. That's how it comes. As you hear the word of God, as you store it in your heart, your faith in God grows stronger. You become an overcomer. When the enemy tries to attack you through sickness, fear, worry, you know, activate your faith by finding the scriptures to declare over your life every day. Declare that God shall supply all your needs. Declare that you are the head and not the tail, that you're above the circumstances, not below them. That you are healed by the stripes of Jesus. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Amen? Now, if you're a business person in here today, do you know what you should do tomorrow morning? You get up, Father, I thank you. Here's another week for me to be the head and not the tail, to be above all things. I will be blessed going in and going out. Everything I put my hand to shall be blessed. I'm going to have great victory this week. Do you know, if every business Christian person would do that, hey, you wouldn't have to be worrying going to the bank manager and asking, can I get another loan? Can you see me through? No, success will come your way. Amen? We've got at least six then. Well, that's good. See? As you hear the word of God, you store it in your heart, your faith that God grows stronger. It means you're an overcomer. Hallelujah. When the enemy tries to attack you, and he does, doesn't he? Through sickness, fear, worry. Activate your faith by finding those scriptures to declare good life for you every day. You should always be declaring that God su will supply all your needs. Declare you're the head. You're not the tail. You're above the circumstances, not below them. You are healed by the stripes of Jesus. And, and, and don't wait till you get sick to start saying that. You should say that every day of your life. It only takes a few seconds. Thank you, Jesus, by your stripes and meal. That way you're keeping your body maintained. I think you all know if you have a car, you've got to service it. You know what happens if you don't? Well, you've got to service your body too. You should say that every day. I do. I'm not just saying that. I said it today coming here. Thank you, Jesus. By your stripes, I am healed. See, maintain health. If you're healthy, well, you might get wealthy. I think it goes together. If you're healthy, you'll do wise things. And you'll have the strength to do them. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Isn't that true? Declare that because you are born of God, you have faith in Christ to overcome the world. Again, the scripture we just read from 1 John 5, verse 45, as a believer in Jesus Christ, you have victory over this world and make the decision to walk confidently in his victory today and every day of your life. Amen. Praise God. Then, you'll see the power of God moving in your life. People say, well, if God's real, how come this happens? How come that happens? Well, I'll tell you why it happens. You don't know the word. And if you do know the word, you're too lazy to put it into action. Get rid of that laziness. Become strong. Become bold in the things of God. Amen? Praise God.